Good evening and welcome to OMB TV. I'm your host, L.A. Jordan, here in the Bluff City, baby, Memphis, Tennessee, home of the Blues, Barbecue, and the Memphis Grizzlies. Plumley is now out. Weeza for Shiza is back in the game. Trying to put that away. Elpers hits it into the block. Net violation again on the Rebels. Point goes to Chattanooga. Petkosh back to serve. Back set to the right side, number seven. Stephenson unable to put it away. Easy point for the Mox. Sweat off their brow. Anderson's back in the game, front row. Burgeon, setter for the Mox is back to serve. Remember that spot I was talking about that uh, the Mox always have open on the court? Guess who's taking advantage of it again? Lexi Thomas. They better close it up. Mox only have to get two points to win the set to stay in the game. Get a recovery there. We get a back row. Roll. Oh, yes. Petkosh goes up for a Burgess. Sends it over on the second touch. Good play by Bergeron. And that was right there, the game changer that they needed to stay in this match. It's anybody's game at this point. We are now tied two sets to two. Mox is still in this thing. Ole Miss is still in this thing. I'm still in this thing. And if you're watching, you're still in here with us. Stylized. I'm Jaleesa Monroe, your host of Stylized. And today we have our Roots Hair and Beauty Supply Store here on 3913 Brainerd Road in the Belmore Plaza. Today we're going to interview Mr. Sam Tisdale, the owner of Roots Hair and Beauty Supply Store. All right, and here's Mr. Sam Tisdale. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Roots? Yeah, uh, so um, number one, um, my name is Sam Tisdale. I've been in business for somewhere around 15 years. Own a few businesses locally. Uh, Russell Boulevard, Brainerd, Gunbarrow, Tisdale Fashions. And I recently opened up Roots Hair and Beauty. Wig wall, which I love wigs. Exactly. <laughs> I love Everybody. Wig. Absolutely. All right, so you guys just recently opened wig? Uh, we've been open for about three months. Uh, we had our grand opening somewhere around three weeks ago. It uh, went well. We had a big crowd. Blessed. Uh, de definitely happy for that. And um, we're growing every day. New new customers coming every day. So. All right. And you guys are open seven days a week. What are the times? So we're open seven days. Um, Monday through Wednesday, we're open from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. And then Thursday through Saturday, we're open from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. And it's Sundays, 12 to 6. I always come on Sundays because oh, yeah. there's not a lot of people there. Exactly. I can get in, see everything, and get right on back out. I like that. Speaking of going in, you mind if we go on yourself? Yes, take a look. Lisa Monroe reporting with Mox News. The UTC Theater Department is gearing up for their last play of the season entitled, By the Way, I'm Veer Star. The play is set between the 1930s and the early 2000s. It is about an African-American vaudeville actress named Vera Starks that becomes a legend. Although her successes may have led her to Hollywood, she is not able to escape her past. Ms. Maya Abram is set to play Vera. She tells us of what we can expect from her in upcoming performances. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm, I dance a little bit, I sing a little bit, and get to act a little bit, so it's, it's a whole big mixture. The students and characters may have more alike than we think. After all, they are actors portraying actors. Mario Hoyle expresses how he and his characters are alike. Hi, I'm Jaleesa Monroe reporting with Mox News. As students prepare themselves for a homecoming game today, Ryan Tudor and Christine Pignini are preparing themselves for a happily ever after. This year homecoming will be something to remember as Ryan Tudor proposed to his girlfriend on the football field at the UTC homecoming game. The two UTC alumni met their sophomore year and have dated ever since. To celebrate their journey at UTC, Ryan thought that this was most appropriate. Uh, we both went to UTC and it uh, meant a lot to us and I wouldn't have met her without UTC in Chattanooga, so I thought it was appropriate. Christina thought it would just be another normal homecoming game. Little did she know, and boy was she surprised to see that her life was about to change. I was completely surprised. He said, hey, come down here, and he asked the guy, he said, my name's Ryan Tudor, and they let us through, some security officer. 
And I was like, that's never worked before. <laughs> Outsourcing of Tennessee state jobs. Many state facilities and maintenance workers are preparing themselves for the worst. Allegedly, they may be without a job or benefits in 2016. And state officials' efforts to save taxpayers' money may come at the expense of some state employees losing their jobs. There's some people that worry about it, but the majority of us are to the point where, you know, hey, we, we can't worry about it. We've got to go ahead and do our job, and, you know, what's going to happen is going to happen. And if, if they do, if we just move on to something else. Many UTC employees have worked at the university for years, every dime made to take care of themselves and their families. This time next year, that could all change. Parents rushed to the scene of a school bus accident in Hickson as 10 children were sent to the hospital. Okay, state your name and your position. Uh, my name is Jani Webster. I'm an organizer with a union called United Campus Workers. Okay, and today you guys had a protest. And what was what was the protest about? We were protesting for $15 an hour for uh, custodians at the University of Memphis and other workers who don't make $15 here. Uh, the president promised in January that he would raise employee wages to $15 an hour, and it's six months later, and he has yet to produce a budget or a timeline for doing so. Okay. And so are the workers, are they still working every day or how, how deep is the process getting? So some of them were out here today. Uh, they um, either they um, their shifts are later. And so they came out today just to talk about some of their working conditions. And some of them just couldn't get off. But they're here every day um, putting in hours, working just like the rest of us. Um, but they're only making 11 11. Um, and it's 2019, it's time for that to end. We need uh, a wage that's gonna make sure that people um, can, and can keep food on the table and not have to juggle their bills. Uh, one of the custodians out here today said she has to uh, rob Peter to pay Paul. We all know how that feels and she's been here for 19 years. There's no way that someone who's been working for someone that's been loyal to an employer should still be making a poverty wage. And we were also out here to tell President Rudd and the Board of Trustees here at University of Memphis that um, our, our, our workers can't eat off benefits. They said that workers make more than 15, more than 16, because if you count their benefits, it adds up to that much. And we know you can never count people's benefits as part of their take-home pay, and we feel like that's unfair for them to say. And it's just, uh, um, it just lets us know how they're thinking about the issue, and we believe that's the wrong way. Okay, is there anything as a community that we can do to support you guys? Yeah, so there, um, if you go to Living Wage for Campus Workers on Facebook, you'll be kept up with our campaign and there'll be a petition there that you can sign. Um, so Living Wage for Campus Workers, or you can go to United Campus Workers on Facebook. And do you need a certain number of signatures at all? We're just collecting them all the time because eventually we're going to present it to the president. Okay. Anything else you want to let us know? Uh, we just thank the community in Memphis for coming to support us today. Um, we hope that people join this fight. And if you are working for under $15 an hour, we encourage you um, to talk to your coworkers about what you can do um, to raise your wages because everyone in the city of Memphis deserves it. In my hand is the letter that University of Tennessee President Joe DiPietro sent all of his state employees on October the 21st. In the letter, he informs everyone of where UT stands as far as outsourcing. Many potential employees want to be hired as a University of Tennessee employee and not under a potential outsourcing situation.